Sandy's Circus, a story about Alexander Calder, by Tanya Lee Stone, illustrated by Boris Kolkivov. Sandy's Circus, a story about Alexander Calder, by Tanya Lee Stone, illustrated by Boris Kolikov. For Jake and Lisa, and for everyone brave enough to follow their own unique path in life, TLS, to Natalie B. BK. There once was an artist named Alexander Calder, only he didn't call himself Alexander, and he didn't call the things he made art. Everyone called him Sandy. He had been making his objects since he was a kid. Sandy's mother was a painter, his father was a sculptor. Even though they moved from Pennsylvania to Arizona to California to New York and back to California, his parents always made sure Sandy had a workshop and tools. He made his friends toys and jewelry from scraps of wood, leather, and wire he would pick up off the street. Sandy built his sister Peggy a castle for her doll, complete with a moat. He and Peggy made toy animals and played circus in the workshop. Even though Sandy loved creating things, he didn't always want to be an artist. He went to college and learned more about making things by studying to be an engineer. Sandy had different jobs but never really liked any of them. When he worked as a fireman in the boiler room of a ship, one night he was sleeping up on deck sailing between San Francisco and New York. When he woke, he was awestruck. On one side of the ship was a fiery red sunrise. On the other, the full moon shone like a silver coin. The sight made Sandy want to go to art school, and he did. Artists Need to Work A newspaper hired Sandy to draw the Ringling Brothers and Barnum and Bailey Circus. For two weeks, day and night, he went to the stadium, drawing as many different parts of the circus as he could. He loved sketching the elephants, the flying trapeze, the lion tamer, and the dancers. Sandy sat in different parts of the theater to see from up high, down low, off to the side. The next year, 1926, he decided to go to Paris. Why Paris? Because that city was alive with art. And Sandy said, in Paris, it's a compliment to be called crazy. Sandy rode through the streets of Paris on his orange bicycle. He carried a roll of wire around his shoulder and a pair of pliers in his pocket. When Sandy bumped into a friend, out came the wire and pliers. He would twist and bend and curl while he chatted, and before they said adieu, Sandy would give his friend a gift. Voila! A small portrait of the person, made of wire. One day, Sandy made a little wire lion. He built a colorful cage for the lion. Of course, since the lion was a wild animal, it needed a tamer, so Sandy made him too. When he made a high wire walkers and a high wire for them to walk on, and a safety net just in case they should fall, and a flying trapeze, and a red stage, Sandy started to see a whole circus come to life before his eyes. Then he really got going. His huge hands worked with tiny pieces of wire, cork, cloth, buttons, yarn, string, leather, paper, and bits of wood. He twisted and shaped and curled and cut and curved until... Sandy was ready to put on a big top circus show. His circus filled two suitcases. Click, click. Sandy set up the stage with his animals and performers wherever and whenever he could. He went back and forth, back and forth, from Paris to New York, those suitcases always along for the ride. During one stay in New York, Sandy made more animals and acrobats. His circus grew to fill five suitcases. When it was showtime, out came the suitcases. Click, 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 click. A friend wound up on the gramophone to start the music. Sandy boomed a greeting to his audience in the voice of the wire ringmaster, Monsieur Loyal, announcing the performance that was about to begin. On his knees, this bear of a man worked the springs and strings and levers of his clever creations, making them leap, run, and dance. Hear the whistle blow! 
horns blare. See the flying Filipini flip. The ro lion's roar. The lion tamer tame. Seals bark, tossing a ball from nose to nose. Rigolu, the strong man, bent his toes and raises a huge barbell high above his head, showing off for his beloved bearded lady. Horses gallop, birds flutter, dogs dance on whirly-twirly legs. Kativo the clown plays tricks on his fellow performers. He dangerously distracts the axler just as he hurls his axe at the wire girl. Oh no! An injury under the big top... But never fear, help is on the way. Sirens wail. Two wire rescue workers race to carry the girl off on a teeny tiny stretcher. Sometimes the show went on for hours. There were chariot races and bucking broncos, a belly dancer, camel, and kangaroo. Sandy crawled around on his hands and knees, arranging his wire animals and circus folk, setting them in motion to perform for the crowd. After the grand finale, he brought them all back for a bow. Encore! Encore! The crowd laughed and clapped and cheered for more. Word spread throughout Paris and New York. Everyone wanted to see Sandy's circus. They loved how full of joy and fun it was. They loved how Sandy's work was always in motion. People said, He has discovered in playing a new world. His art has the force of an ocean. Sandy delighted in crafting things that moved. He made new kinds of art, hanging his shapes up, connecting the pieces to each other with wire and letting the air drift and spin them into motion. In doing so, he turned ordinary objects into extraordinary art. He invented the very first mobiles, and it all started with Sandy's magical, movable circus. Author's Note Alexander Calder was one of the most important American artists of the 20th century, and his circus was one of the most important works. I remember the first time I saw Alexander Calder's work outside of a museum. My soon-to-be husband and I were enjoying a lazy Sunday drive in the western hills of Connecticut. As if by magic, in the midst of cows and the serene country roads, a large yard appeared, filled with bright, bold sculptures. The line, color, and the joyous of these structures were unmistakable to me, Stop the car! We climbed out and peered as politely as possible into the backyard. Okay, we stared incredulously. I had no idea that Calder had lived in Roxbury, Connecticut, but it quickly dawned on us that we were standing on the edge of the Calder estate. It was easy to imagine what life might have been like in the backyard when Sandy Calder was alive, passing out croquet mallets to friends who dropped by and sharing a love of life with all who were lucky enough to know him. Ever since that moment, I have wanted to capture a piece of the Calder essence in a story. The man invented the mobile, a whimsical sculpture artfully designed to move as freely as the air or wind lets it. It's a form we now take for granted, yet even the mobiles that hang over baby cribs would not exist without Calder. He also built enormous bold metal sculptures that stood still, called stables. I hope that I have been able to convey some of the Calder magic through the story of Sandy Circus.